In this video, I'd like to go over parametric drawings, or in other words, drawings whose elements self-update when things change. It can be very hard to find all of the changes that propagate through a drawing when an update is made. So let's go through strategies on how to see that. Uh, the first thing is, in the notes section, auto number notes, do not type the number. When I make notes, uh, sometimes I can say note, and I'll zoom in so you can see this more clearly. Maybe notes in one, note, two, note, you know. That is not good. What should happen is on the uh, text formatting pop-up box that comes up, we click right here, number. And now I add my note, enter, number, new note, and it automatically numbers the notes. Uh, as we progress through this video, you'll see why automatic updating numbers is uh, rather essential. So the first thing that we want to adjust in our notes section, I have outside fence should be three inches from front of house. And I look in the outside of my fence here, and if you see I've got a house assembly, the outside of my fence from the three front of my house is actually 3.25. Right? I made an update in, a, in the last iteration, and that was not reflected in the notes. It used to be three inches, now it's 3.25. And so I could put 3.25, but the next time that updates, I'll be out again. So what I should do is instead have a flashing cursor where I want to have the dimension, and I click the dimension in the drawing, and notice 3.25 shows up. Now, what's different about this is with text I can step through letter by letter, but when I get to the note, I cannot edit the dimension. That's telling me that that note is linked to that dimension. And if I open up my assembly, and I adjust this house down to, let's say, 3 inches, and I accept, save, go back, you can see the dimension updated three inches and the note updated to three inches as well. So that's a quick way that you can link notes, or actually, I'm sorry, dimensions into the notes section. Now, next thing, flag notes. Um, so I have my third note, three indicate surface should be smooth. Uh, this was not very astute of me. What I did is I just inserted a character with the with the border. If I was a little bit more smart, I could highlight this three and add in a border, a, a triangle border, and that's a more efficient and I think drafting standard uh, way of doing a flag note. But there's another problem. If I add a new note, notice my auto numbering that I talked about earlier. This goes to delta 4, and this stays at delta 3. right? And so what I did down here to create this 3 is I just added a note, did 3, and then I inserted a border here of triangle. But And I should have had that 3 highlighted. But that doesn't work, because when my notes change, as we've seen, that flag is not parametrically linked to that note. So how do we fix this? Well, first, uh, when I add this triangle, I'm going to click a box called Add to Flag Note Bank. And here I have my note 3, D4, Sheet, and then I have my note indicates blah, blah, blah. So I've got this little bank of flag notes. Next, I'm going to get rid of this. And let's go to, uh, instead of note, we're going to go to Balloon. And I'm going to balloon this, but now we'll say flag note bank, and I click on this three, and now I have a parametrically linked uh, note from my bank. So if I add a note, new note, uh, my delta four catches up with my delta four. They're linked through the flag note bank. Another trick for drawings is um, I may want to call this out on multiple surfaces. And to do that, um, it, it can be tempting to add in another balloon. Let's say the front of our house should be smooth. And notice that adds from the flag note bank as well. But that's pretty messy to have so many things. So what I'll do instead is I'm going to hover my mouse over the point of our uh, flag note 
I'm going to hold the control key and click and drag while holding the control key to see I've made a duplicate uh, leader. And if I need to adjust leaders, whether it be on balloons or weld symbols or flag notes, I can simply right click and say add jog point right here. And when I click on the leader, it gives me another point that I can begin to pivot my, my leader line around. So that's another handy thing to do in SOLIDWORKS. And I can hold control and make as many of these leaders as I want to. And I can also add as many jog points as I, was, as I would like to as well. So keep those tools in mind the next time you need to jog a leader around something or you need multiple leaders going to the same thing. You'll notice the formatting on this matches the formatting of my notes. And if this was more in, in line with drafting standards, I would have one single font and font size for all documents throughout, but I made this larger uh, than standard so you can be able to read it from your screen easier. All right, so now I have a note. Um, item two should be able to be disassembled, right? And we can see that my yard right here is item two. But what if someone in the bill of materials decides that they think house should be item number two. Well, now yard is item number one, and yard is called out as item number one, but item number two should be able to be disassembled. This did not update. And so how do we update item callouts in notes? It's really quite simple. I will highlight my number, and then I'll come over here, which says link to cell to table cell, when I click this, I'll select my table cell that I would like to have it linked to, and I click number one here. And now it says item one should be able to be disassembled. Now if I change my yard back to item number two, notice item number two over here is correct, and item number two right here is correct. And I can, uh, for grins, change that over again, and it goes back to being item one, one, and one. So everything is parametrically linked in the drawing, and we don't have to worry about these kinds of updates. All right, uh, the next thing that we would want to look at is our mass. So right now I have 27.95 pounds, but I went and changed a feature in my assembly. And with this assembly up, if I look at my mass properties, I'm at 28.35 pounds. Right, so I'm a little heavier. And uh, what I want to do is make a property that uh, reflects my mass. To do that, I come up to this point here, File Properties. And I get uh, this chart that pops up, and I can type in any name I want to. I'm going to say mass as a property name. Under Type, I'm going to call that Text. And under Value, let's actually go with the mass of the assembly. As you can see, there's a whole host of properties to choose from. You can even uh, import some dimensions. Let's go with OK. Now if we uh, come back here. I uh, highlight what I want to uh, be parametric. I come over here and I say link to property, which is right here, link to property. And I get this little uh, handy <laughs> property thing coming up. And I want to say model found here, right? We're, we're taking a property from a model found in the drawing. And we're going to say select component or other drawing view. And I don't want this selection. So I'm going to go to my history tree and choose my house assembly instead. We're going to pull a property out of that assembly that we just made. Now the property name, we're going to go to mass, right? And now we're at 28.35 pounds, and I'll rebuild. Next thing, if I go to change something, maybe I'll edit this feature. And we're going to make this something like 0.1, so we'll have an even higher mass. And we'll uh, go back to our assembly, and we can see 28.75 is our new number. Next thing, uh, we may need to uh, link a property to an annotation in the drawing. 
Um, and to do that, we can do something that's larger than the same. This is pointing at the house specifically, the vendor number of the house. And so if I come here and go to, um, not my settings, but my properties, I have created, oh, I don't have it, so I'm going to type new property. Vendor number, we'll set that as text. And 8675309-2. And we're OK that. Save and close. And we're going to do something larger the same, just as another example. We're going to say link to property. Uh, instead of house assembly, we're going to say component to which the annotation is attached and sure enough that's our house. Our property is going to be our vendor number and there's our 8675-39-2. So that's an easy way to link properties. And it doesn't stop there, right? Because now we have an incorrect vendor number on the house, 8675-39-1. To best remedy that, I can edit my sketch right here. Notice I have this set as imported text. And if I go to edit my text, and I can just outright delete this, go to my property tab here, current document, property name, vendor number, and it adds in a vendor number. Now if I rebuild, I have the correct vendor number in place of the other text. That's for parametric. So if I go to my properties and change my vendor number to dash three, and I rebuild 8675-39-3, let's close. And our drawing and vendor number up here also matches. So these are some uh, strategies on making effective parametric drawings that update themselves because any number of things, if you change a vendor number and it updates on the model but not up here, you're doing a revision, right? So this can save you a whole lot of, uh, of time and effort in uh, making things parametric. So they'll update by themselves. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.